And my mother's father was a wealthy man, but gave nothing. Jackie Gleason. Right. Your your mother's father was Jackie Gleason. Right. But you guys were poor. Absolutely. So Jackie was Jackie Gleason at the time. Tipping doormen $100 bills, but, you know, meanwhile, you know, uh, hot dogs for Thanksgiving for his daughter and, and her husband. Yeah. And kids. Absolutely. What was, is there a reason behind that? I don't know what the reason was, to honest, to be honest to God. I, I met Gleason twice in my life. So, um... I think there was probably an actor idea uh, that he didn't approve of, which is strange because he was, and he came from great poverty. But my dad wrote that championship season and then became a very big success, had never been in a movie, and got hired in The Exorcist, which is a story for another day. It's a great story how he got that. So, you know, he went from cashing $3 checks at the bank to in a year and a half, when he appealed surprise being nominated for an Oscar in the biggest movie of all time. And he's a kid ultimately, aside from his talent, from uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, coal mine. And uh, he couldn't handle it. So that was as great as it was lifting us out of poverty and all this wondrous stuff. That was the end of dad because he was gone after that. Well, what about, I got to, I'm thinking about Jackie now. Now that there's all this success, did Jackie come back into the picture? Absolutely. He did. Oh, yeah. And absolutely. Because they wanted to make movie versions of uh, that championship season. So Gleason then wanted to play the coach. And I think that's at the point that my dad said, go fuck yourself. Uh, wow. Which he had every right to do. Um, look, it, it there's a lot of crazy, you know, Shakespearean fear and vengeance and, and anger in our business. And I can't explain why, as a father, I can't explain why you wouldn't help your child. I, I, I don't know. But that was the case. Look, from my dad's standpoint, it made him, you know, delivering welfare checks and driving cabs and being a waiter, it made him um, uh, say, I have to be a success. And I think I told Kiefer this when we were doing the play, that he came home one day, we lived in Flushing, Queens, and I was pushing my brother on a broken down playground in this building we lived in. He said he came up the uh, uh, the subway stairs. He looked at us, and I was pushing my brother, and he said he started to cry. He said, I'm getting them out of here. And he went up in the elevator, and he started writing that championship wow. season that day. Wow. And so, you know, you, you, you go with what you go with. And what was your relationship with him? Was it pretty, I mean, pretty it was solid? Def oh, no, definitely fraught, because he was, because he was gone, um, had... You know, major, uh, we've talked about, you know, your dad, I don't know, but my, mine had major alcohol issues and drugs. And the truth is when he had this amazing sort of comet ball of fame and couldn't take it, we lived back east then. He moved to California, you know, bought a Porsche, sort of lived his James Dean fantasies out and sort of sadly pissed away this amazing, amazing career that he had. Because at the time, championship season was the longest running Broadway show since Streetcar Named Desire. Mm -hmm. And he was gives one of the penultimate performances in The Exorcist, a 70s performance. The movie doesn't work without him. So yeah, he can write his own parts and his own ticket. And he just got caught up in the typical uh, uh, Hollywood sort of downturn, the spiral. So from that, you know, as a young man, you look up to your father and you also need him to be there. But in some Oedipal sort of way, when I decided to do what I wanted to do, I just cut that line, man, and wanted to become my own person. And uh, so I never talked about him or my grandfather or any of those things in the early days, ever. How was the relationship towards the end before he um, passed? Did you kind of salvage things a little bit? There was times where we were strange for a while, but towards the end, yes. I mean, for, because you just have to look at for them, as you said, this is who they are. You know, he not going to change them. It's crazier for us to think that we're going to change our parents. This is all he could do. I mean, in 1938, you're born and then you, you if you want to have sex, you marry someone right. and then you have kids. You're not ready to do anything. And then you all of a sudden follow your passions or your mistakes or your demons. And so you have to see, you know, who they are. Look, doing the play all those years later, not only uh, reignited my uh, 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 relationship with Kiefer, which, you know, who I love like a brother, but it also, in the court battle later on, because I did that play and I did it in New York, that's why I got uh, Gus back. So in some karmic way, for everything he did, if I didn't do that play at that moment, you know, and have my son visit me at, at that moment, that piece of evidence that I used, 
I never would have won. And when you and Kiefer game. did that championship season in 2011. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, you, you said something about, didn't you take some of his ashes? I had his urn of urn. ashes and I just put it on the stage, on on, the stage on, right? on, as part of the, as part of the things I figured. I knew he would love this cast and figured I might as well put him up there.